going to be uh, another Drake exposure, but let's watch how Drake got even more pathetic. This is going to be interesting, so let's, let's watch it. Another day passes, the gaping hole that Drake's career is being Pause. dug into is still somehow getting deeper. And after Drake just proved that Kendrick Lamar really is the boogeyman of hip-hop as he just made himself look like a fool as right after this insane no. feud, he rapped over the BBL Drizzy beat on none other than a sexy red song. <laughs> Somehow this wasn't even the worst thing that's happened to Drake recently is after a ton yeah, of music song, leaks bro. from artists like himself, Kanye West, Travis Scott, and Kendrick Lamar hit the internet recently. One of the most jarring discoveries through all of the lost music media that was discovered was a reference track to the 8th song of Drake's 2018 album Scorpion, Mob Ties, that was performed and written by Vori, and while even recently, Drake has had other references. That's crazy, bro. Why didn't... I don't understand. Like, is he just, like... Can he not just write his own shit? I don't... Why does he have so many people write for him? Or is it just, like... Or is it the uh, the credited uh, writer type shit? You know what I mean? Like, the one that they're trying to... Uh, the Drake fans are trying to pull off the... Uh, off the... Well, Kendrick haters are trying to do on Kendrick. Saying that uh, some people have, like, written for him and shit like that. Or, or they're credited in his, uh, his songs and music and shit. It's like... But Drake's, like... I feel like people like they're like full blown writing for him, right? Like why? Like you can't he is he can he not do it or, or something? Like I'm so confused. Like maybe like you know back then he needed that shit, but then like after that when he got caught, like it should have been cool, bro. Like he should have been good. Like dude, like go back to writing if you ever did. I don't know. Maybe you just never did. Maybe that's why he just doesn't write. I don't understand why he has so many. Unique, like Lil Yachty why so many Jumbo writers? Tron popping off her loss, and also Cash Cobain with Calling For You from For All The Dogs. These reference tracks leaking didn't really even stain Drake or prove anything to us that we didn't already know. As with these that's songs true. saying absolutely nothing of substance or meaning anything beyond just being mindless bangers that showcase yeah. Drake evolving with the times. Outside of showing that, that Drake is just copying and pasting the mold set by younger and hotter artists to hop on their waves. These tracks showed us nothing groundbreaking, but with Mob Ties, this tells us something completely different and way more troubling about not just the way Drake makes music, but about who he really is deep down inside as a man, and when you find out why, you'll forever question if anything Drake has said in his music is even real. So with the song Mob Ties, it's real. important to remember the pivotal time in hip-hop that this song released during, and for Drake, how important a cut like this was for his career and reputation at the time. Now right before this track, and for that matter, the entire Scorpion album came out. Drake was on the hottest seat of his career at the time, as after being beaten by Pusha T in one of the most diabolical ways that any rap beef has ever been won with a song <laughs> like The Story of That Enough. With Mob Ties, it is clear that- Hey bro. <laughs> Pusha really did shake up, shake up like Drake's whole life with that shit, bro. That shit was crazy, bro. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna have to revisit like the Pusha T and Drake shit uh, one day because that shit is just like, it's just iconic, bro. <laughs> just like this whole Kendrick and Drake shit will be iconic. Like that Pusha T and Drake is iconic. The Meek Mill and Drake is iconic. Like, bro. Them moments are so crazy. That Drake was alluding to what went down with Push throughout this song, and in addition to him, Kanye West, who Drake was also in the height of their beef with at the time, because Drake believed that Ye leaked Push the information about his long lost kid. And with this track's personal lyricism that takes such close aim to Drake's biggest rivals at the time, having it all be written and performed by another artist would already be one thing. But the fact that during his interview on LeBron James's The Shop all the way back in 2018, when Drake was addressing this beef and really trying to explain how he wasn't as big of a loser than everybody uh, thought and <laughs> that he was actually a victim, he said that after Push's story of Adonai, Instead of feeding into that energy and clapping back at him with more diss tracks, Drake was above this and just put this energy right back into the Scorpion album as he said that he created songs like In My Feelings, Nonstop, and most importantly to his confidence, demeanor, and credibility at the time, Mob Ties, which was a big mm. moment that really asserted that <laughs> while Drake still may have been embarrassed, he was still able to show that he can be feared on the mic. And with Drake holding this track as this creation he made Damn, when his career was facing some perceived conflict at the time, and straight up labeling it as this moment where he showed that he was still so powerful and unbeatable, and even tried to go as far to convince people on television that he won the beef by making cuts like this. Now that we have heard this reference track from Vori who has wrote and performed the song, 
We are seeing that Drake is just straight up comfortable to lie to even Bro, somebody as curly respected hairs, yeah. and great as LeBron James and just try to make what he is doing seem like something else and make it fit a narrative that strengthens his image at the expense of being... Hey, one thing I can say about Drake, bro, the whole, you know, <clears throat> I guess he, he steals, you know, the styles and everything. I understand. But the one thing I say about him, bro, like the versatility is there and that he like, but he mastered the versatility you feel me he mastered the the versatility to it he didn't just steal it and it just like it was you know ass but you know dumb it wasn't it was good everybody fucked with it. everybody was vibe with it no one cared that he stole it until it's crawled out and then everybody cared that he stole it but you gotta admit it was it was fire when it happened you gotta admit it was good like it was it was great eras when it when it popped off whenever he did the little lane word switches and shit it was it was weird it was it was funny it was the weirdest of times. It was the best of times. But, you know, he was doing his thing out there, bro. He kept swapping flows and shit, bro. Like, it was crazy, but it's funny. But he did it with, like, it, his way. But he stole that motherfucker. He stole all the motherfuckers, but still. He did it in their style and his way, though. It, it was, like, it was pretty dope. He took the, their styles and they did it his own way, bro. You gotta admit that the boy was creative with it, at least. But let's just say, like, I, I want to say, like, you know, things should be inspired, though. It doesn't always have to be purely stolen. Like, he could have just got inspired by these people. And, like, by the ones that he purely stole from, obviously, were, like, those artists we talked about, talked about when, um, we watched that one video. Or the last exposed video for Drake. Uh, go check it out. It's on YouTube. Go check it out on my channel. But, uh, it talks about some of the artists that, uh, he basically stole from, didn't pay, like, I love McConan. Like, dude, it's, it's crazy what some of these, like, artists slash producers or label handlers, like, do to the artists, bro. Like, they do not respect what they do, bro. It's insane. They, like, sit their ideas and shit and then just, like, profit off it and do not pay them at all. Like, uh, Quentin Miller, too. Uh, Daylight, too. I, I haven't talked about him at all, but I think that's how you say his name. But Drake is a... Maybe he really run, is running a mob type shit. I don't know, of, of theft. Transparent. And from a moment like this, to even the hard part six where Drake just gaslighted people for six minutes. Because of everything that's coming to light, whether it's the social media <laughs> user who debunked Drake's story of him setting up Kendrick with the item seen on diss tracks. Like if you're new here, I do be yapping. Yeah, this moment bad. right here, where one of Drake's most important songs personally when it came to saving his reputation in his career was not even written by him. Well, I like the Drake's tendency to not just bend the truth, but completely fabricate situations to try to make his image look better is a recurring pattern from him and when we see that Drake could even lie about the nature of songs even when his character is being questioned most, it really makes you sit and wonder what else he has lied about that we don't even know. Now out of all of the Drake songs we have found out were ghostwritten by other artists over the years, this is without a doubt the worst one we have ever gotten because while songs like 10 Bands or any of the other songs recently are tracks that were made to be bangers and turned down the substance all to be catchy, while Mob Ties does have its catchy moments, it's a pretty personal cut from Drake that was supposed to be letting us into his mind and emotional state in a time where he believed he could not trust anyone in his career and now. To find out that even with Push revealing his kid, and him and Ye not being in a good place, and overall, just being conflicted on if there are people around him who are leaking out info. To see that even a song like this was not made by him and was simply designed to not just mimic Drake's cadences and vocal pockets, but also what he is feeling within his own head. More than ever just reveals to us that Drake is not an artist, but a brand that even in what seems like his most <laughs> vulnerable or personal moments, we don't even man like i said before bro he's literally the image and then he like he just taken from these artists man like he's little that's all he is bro he, he really is a brand like that's all he is drake is the brand he is the thing that they're trying to push and i don't know why they all want it in one place or whatever but they you know they push him as the brand and he he like takes from all these other artists to like push the brand that's it that, that's all it is like, these songs that he's, like, uh, not making, bro, it's, like, like, mob ties, like, dude. Some of his best work is not even his work. It's just insane, like, just to, to realize that. Like, the first time realizing it was already crazy enough, but the fact that he's, like, it's still happening, it's, like, you already got caught, he's still doing it. Like, when he really doesn't need to, I don't, I don't think he does. Like, he could pretty much say anything. Like, just like that 
poopy song or whatever that was made. You, you pretty much, like, I don't know, like, if he actually, I don't, I'm pretty sure it was AI, but he could literally probably do that, and it'd be fine. You know what I mean? It's like, nothing would be wrong with that. It'd, be, it'd go just fine. Like, people would still listen to the songs, like, it would probably be criticized heavily, but people, will, like, Drake fans would definitely find a way to make it seem like it, it wasn't a big deal. They'd be like, oh, you know, it, it's whatever, it's, he's just being funny, he's trolling, blah, 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 blah. That's all the people are gonna say. It's no, so funny how it works. what he's getting across is even real or not. Now, besides the humiliating loss of this beef that Drake has only kept making worse, the most damaging thing that has come out of this feud is that Drake is a straight-up liar who is making up more about his career and the very nature of his music than we ever have thought, and when we consider this, and to put into perspective how Drake doesn't just lie about how personal his music is, but tries to gaslight everyone, from his fans to LeBron James, about how deep and important everything is. How can we even respect him in the same light as other hip-hop greats and overall? In a genre like hip-hop where authenticity is still one of the most vital factors for any artist to find success, especially as any sort of lyricist or storyteller. How can we give Drake the same respect as other MCs because he isn't just having other people scribbling about the life he lives? But what this Vori reference track is showing is that other people are flat out thinking as him, and when you try to wear the crown and rap, to be this big of a fraud is just an awful look and should force everyone oh to reevaluate your place in the hip hop world if they have not already. So all in all, with another massive dent on Drake's armor, I don't know how many more of these. I really don't think it's He effective. just decides to switch things up or maybe even walk away from rap as. A like no matter no matter how much Drake gets exposed for, um, at least the ghost writing. Like I feel like the the minor thing, you know, minor. I feel like those would. Um, that one would get him shut down, like, you know, once it's proven to be true, you know, Millie Bobby Brown and um, others, you know, if anything, if, if anything is proven to be true in regards to that, that would shut Drake down, most likely. People will still listen to the music, as I said before, but with the Ghost Riders, I don't think it's going to affect him. You call it a dent in his armor, I don't think it really has any effect. You know, at one point in his career, when it first got revealed, it did, but then it turned out no one cared, and here we are now. Years later, he's still doing it. And it's shocking, but it's also not surprising that no one really, you know, gives a fuck. It's like, why would they? It's like, the music is still banging, my nigga. Like, you feel me? It's still good. The music is solid. It doesn't matter. Like, like I say, you say whatever, whatever the hell he wants to on the track, bro. If the, the beat goes well and it's still great, it doesn't matter. It's, it's gonna be a banger. That's usually how it works. ...as a whole for a few years like he has said he wanted to before continue. all this, because with each moment that he acts like a fool or new information releases about him, Drake manages to look worse and worse all the way to now, where he has stained his entire legacy, because who knows? As Drake was around lyricists as young as Kendrick Lamar and J. Cole when he was writing Take Care and also ghostwriters like Sky Zoo. Maybe his entire career has molded in this way, where Drake is more of a character being played that people almost come in and write for like a TV show, as opposed to Drake being his own entity that no matter what, is rapping from an authentic place and telling us a real life story in some shape or form. So let me know, what do you think of this strange Drake story and how do you think this whole elaborate lie he got caught in doesn't just affect a song like Mob Ties, but his integrity and career as a whole? If this song is ghost written, do you think even more lyrical Drake cuts like his AMPM series are handled by <laughs> other writers too? I can't wait to hear what you have to say. 100%. And if you want to see other rap beefs right alongside Drake versus Kendrick that have ruined people's rap careers, check out the suggested video. I feel like that song right there that he was uh was crying in with uh is that that's the one with Dirk? I'm pretty sure. I feel like that song right there is probably ghost written too, bro. Like just because he's like, damn, I need uh, I need bars for Dirk. And I, I know he had to get somebody to write that shit, bro. Like, it, it's gotta be. Or, like, someone had to write the emotional side, him over here crying and shit. Like, you know, someone had to write that shit in. They probably played into all the memes of him uh, being a baby, simp, all that, all that shit like that. And they probably just, uh, well, I thought a spider was on the roof. But uh, they probably played into that and literally uh, put him crying and shit like that just to go into the gimmick. That's what I feel like what happened with that song. There's probably a lot of songs you can like pick out though that probably uh suggested did are not AI generated but written by somebody else. Yeah, Drake stands are in shambles. I mean, not really. It, like, like again, nothing really like it doesn't really affect him for real. Like, who does it harm? And it's like the music is still like decent. If anything, it's like it's harming the actual artist that wrote the the piece, pretty much. And that that's all like 
it's really doing. So that's really a debate between them because like they're this artist is giving Drake like they're giving him this shit, right? Like that's pretty much what ha what has been like, right? Quentin Miller and all them like they're writing for him, so it's like it's not wrong. It just like Drake just not authentic. Uh, that's just like that's all it is. That's what it that's what it really boils down to, I guess. With all my yapping, it's like. That's what it really is. It's just like he's not authentic with it. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I think I think that's spot on. Like he's just not authentic, and that's why no one really cares. It's just like, uh, you know, the shit's good though. It's just not. It's, it's not him.